Today we dive into the Nine Realms and see what we find. Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, a show that takes you into detail about the things you think you know about comics. I'm your host, Scott Nicewander, and I'm sorry for the lack of episode last week. I was very sick with the flu. I still kind of am a little bit, still recovering, uh, but I did also see Thor The Dark World last week, and boy, do I have spoilers to say, but I won't. Because I respect you guys too much. There is always the possibility that I could accidentally say something that's a spoiler, so I apologize because I really don't know what your tolerance level is on the information spoiler scale I just invented in my head. But last time I did tell you that we were going to be talking about the Nine Worlds, or Nine Realms, however you want to call it. Uh, and basically we're going to be dissecting this crazy little image here. There's a lot of information here, a lot to tackle, and I doubt we'll get to it all, but we'll try to hit the main points. So first things first, there's actually a little paragraph at the bottom corner of the image that's full of useful information, but who likes reading, right? Not me. So I'll paraphrase it for you guys. Essentially, all you need to know is that all of the images are not drawn to any sort of scale, nor do the positions of them matter in any way, shape, or form because they don't physically exist on the same plane anyway. Chances are we'll be diving into this paragraph later for some more useful information, so stay tuned for that action. But why don't we just dive into what are the Nine Worlds and who inhabits them, starting with last week's trivia challenge, which was... Who or what lives on Svartalfheim? Hal Jordan wins. I don't even think I need to explain why, but for context of this post, you can go view last episode. At the bottom, it was great. But below this glorious comment was the answer to the trivia challenge, which is that the Dark Elves live on Svartarhar. That's right. Google Translate tells me that Svart, other than being something that makes my eight-year-old mind giggle, also means black and Heim means home, so black home or dark world, maybe, if you didn't understand where the title came from. Take away Svart and you're left with plain old Alfheim, the land of the light elves. There's actually quite a bit of pairings like this that makes it easier to remember, so, you know, mnemonics. So of course we know that there are Asgardians on Asgard, duh, but there's also the Vanir on Vanaheim, who are essentially the same as Asgardians, often being called the Sister Race. Then you have the Frost Giants of Jotunheim, the Fire Demons of Muspelheim, and also the Dwarves of Nadavalir. Then of course we have all those that inhabit the realm of Midgard, aka Earth. That's you and me. We're those people. Eight realms down, three to go. What? How is that? That's not how you math, Scott. You're an idiot. No. Maybe but I know what I'm talking about. The ninth realm is hell. Good old H-E single hockey stick. And I really want to do a spoiler about Thor right now, but I'm not going to because I have restraint. So hell with one L is the land of the dead, but it's it kind of differs from the typical view of hell, which is like a place where bad people go. It's not. It's not a place where bad people go. It's also not a place where good people go when they die. Scott, you're saying, how is this possible? There are only two types of people in the world, those who are good and those who are not. First of all, young listener, you're very hostile. I'm going to need you to calm down. But secondly, uh, I believe anyone who's seen this kind of chart will realize that there is an entire section of people that is neither good nor bad. Thirdly, this might make sense if I told you where good and bad people go when they die. First off, we have Niflheim. Yet another name that makes my eight-year-old brain smile. This is where the bad people go. And more specifically, I guess, since bad is kind of a relative term, this is where the dishonored people go, the dishonored dead. So Thor, for example, who has fought countless battles, slaying who knows how many enemies, and also causing quite a lot of destruction and chaos in his path. I think you missed a column. Shut up! Would not go to Niflheim because he would not be considered a dishonored dead. If anything, he's been trying to keep the peace between the nine realms and therefore would be considered the honored dead. 
and would instead go to a little place, I don't know if you've heard of it, uh, it's called Valhalla. You know what, I'm actually gonna let these guys explain it. We're standing in a land very few humans have ever seen. This is the world known as Valhalla. It's where brave Asgardian warriors go when they die. It is the world where the honored dead of Asgard go. Here the astral energy of the deceased exist until Ragnarok. It's very close but distinct from Asgard in the same way that Niflheim is relative to Hell. And as Sif points out, this is where the honored dead await Ragnarok, which is essentially the final battle between good and evil. So that covers the main worlds. Let's go back and see what else we can find on this picture. So right at the top here we have Yggdrasil. I'm so bad at these pronunciations. This is the world tree. You can think of it kind of like the backbone to all of these different worlds where they're connected via branches and roots of the tree. Then of course we have the Bifrost or Rainbow Bridge, which I'm sure you're familiar with. This is how Asgardians transport themselves uh, from Asgard to Earth and back and forth. In the movies, it can take them to any of the nine realms, but in the comics, it's just a connection between Asgard and Midgard. The way you get to other worlds like Jotunheim, and Alfheim and Vanaheim, all that jazz, is by using what is shown here on this picture called interdimensional passageways. And going back to the little bits of text at the bottom of the picture, we can read that it says that all of these different passageways that it points out are just a small sample, and that the actual number of different roads, essentially, between worlds is unknown. Lastly, I think we're gonna tackle this cute little guy here. Now, I'm sure in your normal life, you've probably looked up at the sky and have not seen a giant snake circling the Earth. Maybe you have, I don't know. If that's the case, get yourself some help, man. Your family loves you. Ready to hear me pronounce something terribly again? I feel like there should be a counter in the top corner just ticking away at all the mispronunciations. This little guy, I should, little is anything but an accurate description, it is known as the Midgard Serpent or Jormungand. Is that right? Yeah, Jormungand, why not? This is one of Loki's children. So all of you girls out there who are obsessed with Tom Hiddleston and want to marry Loki, you should know what kind of family situation you're gonna be diving into. I sent this to my sister and she said she was really happy about it, which is weird. I don't know. What do you guys think? Which one of these worlds do you want to visit? Or if you could create your own world, what would it be? What kind of people would inhabit this new world? Let me know in the comments. But now it's time to test your thinking thoughts skills in a segment we call the Weekly Trivia Challenge. So next week is gonna be our 20th episode, which means it's time for another top five countdown and in honor of one of my favorite holidays coming up, Thanksgiving, the time when people shove their face holes with food items relentlessly. I think we should do a top five list of the best or rather worst or most ridiculous food themed characters. My favorite food themed characters. And why not start off that list with number five with a little trivia challenge. So this week's trivia challenge is what hungry character comes from the planet Bismol? If you think you know the answer or just wanna leave your best guess, you can do so by leaving a comment in the comments below. If you're right, you could get featured on the show next week. So get started. On the weekly trivia challenge. That's a song I just wrote for you. Let's see what you guys said on last week's episode. No comments about Nazi Thor or fake Stalin, but I think we can we can keep on trucking. Mike Cunningham wants to know what our thoughts are about Thor The Dark World, and there will be a video about this subject, hopefully this week. Fingers crossed, I have a lot to work on to get that video out. 
Um, but hopefully it'll be at the end of the week, we'll push that out. But uh, without giving anything away, I will say I think it was much better than the first one. I've always thought the first one was kind of like uh, one of the weaker movies in the, in the Marvel Phase 1. Uh, but to hear more uh, on those thoughts and on the thoughts of the others at NerdSync, you can tune into that video when it comes out. To be the outro, I wanted to know what I thought were the best comics out at the moment. Unfortunately, I haven't actually read a comic in about a month and it makes me sad. I just, you know, between trying to run the channel and do the podcast and uh, also getting sick, it's been very hard for me to keep up with comics. Uh, some of them, I'm only one issue behind. Some of them, I have yet to even start the entire series. Nova, for example, I hear is great. I have them all. I have not started reading them. Um, so I don't know whether it's worth me keeping on getting that series yet because I haven't even read one issue. But what do you guys think? That's an interesting comment thread we could start below. What are some of your favorite comics that are out right now? I don't think I'm qualified to judge what, uh, what is and, and is not a good comic, so you leave your opinions down in the comments below. And if you have something to say about this week's episode, you can do so in the comments below. Uh, if it's interesting or funny, I will say it on the show next week. I'll address it, give you my thoughts about it. But that wraps up another episode of Comic Misconceptions. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed to NerdSync Productions yet, you can do so by clicking down there. And uh, we have new episodes of Comic Misconceptions every Wednesday, along with other videos uh, that come out weekly as well. Uh, you can find us on all of the major social networking platforms like Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you can also check out our podcast on iTunes. You go over there, you subscribe, you rate. In fact, if you want to leave us a little review, that is, you know what, here's what we'll do. Leave a terrible pun as a review on iTunes. You're like the worst pun you could probably think of. I think that would be really funny, just because. But uh, yeah, check out that. We interview uh, other YouTubers, fellow YouTubers, as well as um, some, we recently did some game designers and whatnot, so. That's all really exciting. Go check that out. We'll see you right here next week, hopefully, unless I get even sicker, which I don't want that to happen. Until then, uh, I'm Scott. See you next time when we talk about more things that you thought you knew about comics. See ya. I almost said, like, in memory of my holiday, like, Thanksgiving is gone. In memory of Thanksgiving. We all remembered it. It was eaten by Black Friday. Those deals, man, they were vicious. And we'll see you right here on Cabin on Cabin. Yeah, so close. So it would happen to have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Feel me?